to sunny Barcelona. We're here at IoT Solution World Congress 2018, where we have decided to forego the beach and demonstrate what we're doing for automation-based zero trust from silicon to cloud in absolutely any location. So we're going to get an overview of this from myself, Philip Griffiths from NetFoundry, and Jeff Shiner with Micron Technology. So what we're going to be showing off today is a piece of this total solution as we're trying to make that silicon cloud and how you can actually almost make a plug and play system that makes it easier on customers to pull a full security and a very monetizable solution together. We'll go through that demo here in a bit. We'll highlight some of the Alimenta flash memory with uh, new capabilities, basically secure element technology, built-in flash. Hi, I'm Nitin Jain from Tata Communications. In this particular demo, Tata Communications is providing highly secure and programmable cellular-based IoT connectivity. The powerful combination of Tata Communications, Move, and NetFoundry brings managed edge to cloud IoT connectivity that combines the security, the visibility, and control of private networks with the economies of scale of the public internet. With Micron, we are combining the SIM as a secured element capa capabilities with Authenta's hardware root of trust to enhance further security and validation of IoT devices. What is Zero Trust? Zero Trust is a framework that was defined by Forrester in 2012 that said the perimeters dissolved, applications distributed everywhere with IoT, SaaS, multi-cloud, and therefore we need to have an approach which says I don't trust anything till everything is guilty until proven innocent. In that approach, you are able to securely access your applications from any device or location using micro-segmentation of networks to the application layer with um, software-defined perimeters so you can't laterally move, as well as using least privileged access where you're only able to access the applications you should be and nothing else within the system, which integrates into your next generation identity access management system to seamlessly manage that for the customer because fundamentally if it's hard to use, no one will use it. What we've done for NetFoundry is we've built an application-specific network which is fully software-only, can be deployed in minutes from any location using APIs and DevOps tools such as Terraform or Ansible while providing a performance optimization over that network and zero trust security from the ground up. So that means incorporating these lovely principles of software-defined perimeters, micro-segmentation, least privileged access, zero trust of the underlay network, and then also going beyond that where we can have dark networks with um, no inbound ports, IP address obfuscation, as well as highly secure post-encryption session splitting of data in motion. What we've demonstrated is how we can take this into IoT because our software endpoint is able to be deployed as an SDK onto, for example, an industrial microcontroller. And we have demonstrated the trust and authenticity and integrity of the end device by using the Micron Authenta flash memory, which gives us the hardware root of trust, which is unspoofable as well as having secure boot and execution to provide our DICE certificate, which our network controller says, this is a secure device, I allow it to move data into my cloud. What we will demonstrate in a minute is someone coming along, doing a hack to the vehicle with a USB, changing the firmware on the flash, the DICE certificate changing and therefore being denied access to the NetFoundry network over the move cellular connectivity and from that point you're able to go through a remediation process remotely instead of sending an engineer on site to reflash the memory put it to a known good state with a golden image and therefore have a fully trusted endpoint device again so that you can seamlessly operate and use that automation which supports a heterogeneous environment when you have multiple applications multiple owners of those applications and the data and be able to micro segment them so that the end user they can only see application data, whereas the OEM or operator are able to operate the gateway unit. So we're gonna go through the demo and give you the highlights of exactly what functionality we have already turned on. And at the end, what we'll do is we'll give you kind of a scalability of what we will be turning on over the next coming months. So first of all, we have a couple different elements here. We have the view that we wanna show how entitlements or credentials 
uh, first of all, pre least privilege uh, approach of giving a certain party access to information is control. And we've done this with a little simple capability to go between different looks and feels on this through URL addresses that a catch that go directly out and hook into Azure's IoT hubs. We'll talk through that process. And then over here on the right, you actually have a secure gateway that we have created based on a core IQ processor with Micron enabled Authenta enabled Micron flash memory. This is a standard flash memory with this additional technology. And then we on the top of this you have the move SIM capability that we'll talk to at the end. And so we'll walk through this. If you want to back out real quick, we will then start the process of first attesting or onboarding the device to the cloud. And to do this, we have to manually unplug the board. So first, we're going to emulate actually a fleet, in this case, a forklift that has been shipped to the Barcelona Smart Factory. And so this would be the first time that this forklift would actually come online based on an employee turning on or maybe a manager turning on this device. So we have to bring power onto the device. So we're going to be doing that manually. Okay. So while this boots up, we're now going to watch the onboarding process. So now what we're going to see, we've brought power on to the forklift and we're actually generating certificates in the silicon and this is a DICE protocol mm -hmm. that has been uh, developed by Microsoft and the Trusted Computing Group. We've actually implemented that into that Quad Spy NOR device, which is that standard flash memory. And we're showing a boot time generation of a DICE-based certificate. So we are generating a private, public, cryptographic key pair. And that certificate, and as soon as we see the device come online, you'll see a measurement attestation based on the color. And then I'll walk through exactly what's happened. So now you just saw that the device just came up and we have a green reading, which means this device came online physically and basically correct based on the measurement of code that was booted from this device. What we've done to actually achieve this onboarding process is first that certificate was brought to the NetFoundry uh, network fabric that basically established a TLS session between the device and the Azure I, or device provisioning service. And then based on that certificate, the device provisioning service has allocated that workload or that service to a specific IoT hub. So what we've emulated here is three different views based on credentials. We are spinning up what would be the equipment owner's view because they are trying to digitally transform and actually move from where they sell equipment into a rental or maybe pay per use model. So we're trying to emulate what that might look like. You'll see that they might be tracking their entire fleet. They also might have different types of devices. All of this can be identified based on the certificate that arrives. We have forklifts, sleds, and even conveyor belts. Because remember, this is also based on standard flash memory that's pervasive in the industry. So the second view that we have would be the view of a facility operator. In this case, the Barcelona Smart Factory. And he would typically be looking for all the fleet, or in this case, this particular uh, forklift that's come online, identified and healthy. So he's managing the health of that device or the functionality of that device. The third view is actually an application that we've loaded, just running a traditional, maybe predictive maintenance workload on this forklift. In this case, what we're measuring is power, uh, the battery life, and the temperature of the engine, so that if an anomaly were to happen, that third-party service might know to come bring out a battery if the battery is going bad or something like this. So it's an ability to run, it's just an example of any predictive maintenance workload. And in this case, they received access based on the health and based on it was dedicated to their use for that IoT hub. So it's the concept of bringing privileges to the device based on health and what that user uh, needed access to, in this case data, that is also driven from the same silicon. We're going to now emulate a USB attack on that device directly in hardware. So what we've done is we've actually created this virtual hack button that will actually rewrite the flash device by adding a couple bits of code to that, which then with an active measurement that's being attested to the NetFoundry controllers, 
it'll be detected and will be brought offline. So I'm going to hack, and this is actually gonna provide a program, a new programming to that flash memory device. And what we'll do now is we'll watch as the roundabout takes us offline. Okay, so now we have just seen after the reboot, you now have bad certificate generation at that silicon level. You see the red, what we've set this up to do is we've the correct certificates are in the NetFoundry controllers that are actually recognizing that this is bad. The particular way we've remediated this is to set up an IoT hub dedicated for failover. So even though we were kicked out of the NetFoundry uh, data center, but we reestablished directly to the failover hub in IoT, or an IoT hub, we actually have the ability to now bring the device back to good. So you'll see we have an alert, and we can go through the different screens. This, of course, is the OEM equipment manufacturer, and maybe they are the only uh, dedicated party that has access to do an OTA firmware update to fix malicious code or just other code issues. If we go then and see that gap in time, maybe from a, an offline work because of the hack, you do not have the ability to update this device at this level. We have given on top here, but that's not what maybe most workloads would do. So I'm gonna go back here, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to re-update the firmware with the correct image and reboot the device. Okay, so we had a hack. We now have reflashed the memory with the correct image, and upon reboot, it now recognizes that it is a good firmware image, healthy firmware image, so we are back online the correct way. So now I can go back to the actual predictive workload, and you'll see that we actually have new data coming in with a trusted device, so we're back online healthy. If you really look at the big picture, is we have certificate generated, an X509 certificate generated in flash memory at the lowest level of boot. Sending certificates out to both NetFoundry to establish a TLS session. With that TLS session established to IoT hubs in Azure, you now have the capability to have isolated applications running based on a lot of automated policies that you can put in place. These could be very specific and critical operations, or they could be monetization opportunities for your company that aren't as critical. You get to direct it at any level you want between public and private cloud, and it really gives a lot of flexibility for where everybody needs to go with silicon to cloud security. So fundamentally, that is automation based zero trust for heterogeneous IoT, which takes the root of trust from your unspoofable hardware and the secure firmware which can then be deployed into absolutely any country with borderless connectivity. And now we're off to the beach. Well, I am at least.